Okay, guys, I hope you can hear me okay. Come on in, have a seat, whatever. This is gonna be such a thrown together video. It's my day off and yesterday was my first day on my own at my new job. And I am making supper right now. Honestly, that alone has taken most of the day to decide what I'm even making. <clears throat> I had certain ingredients that I needed to use up. And so you go on Pinterest or whatever and start looking up recipes. And by the time you're done, like you don't even know what to make and you order out. <laughs> sort of where I kind of got to. I'm not ordering out. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it gets way more complicated than it needs to be. Anyway, so I am making supper. It's not going to be anything fantastic and I'm not even going to tell you what it is and I'm not even going to record it. It's my day off. I know I look like crap. Uh, yesterday was a long day. It was also my first day on my own at the new job, which I had two weeks training, but those two weeks, I only work two and a half days a week. So it's not all that much when you consider that it's a job I've never done before. It's an industry that I'm not familiar with at all. But anyway, the girl that trained me was awesome. I love her. I wish she wasn't leaving. I think we could have been really good friends and made a really good team. But to no avail, she needed to move on. So no matter how much I begged and cried. So I made it through yesterday. I went in really early, like about at least an hour earlier than I needed to be. And I was probably there an hour later than I needed to be. Um, because it's just taking me longer to do the tasks that I need to do. And there's things that you can do ahead and kind of get prepared so that when patients come in and register, uh, you know, like their insurance stuff, some of them you're able to do ahead and that's already populated and it makes it quicker at checkout and whatever. Like, I, I can't explain it because I still don't totally understand it, but I'm getting there. And every day I come home and I think, okay, this was hard and kind of a brain drain. Um, but I know more today than I did yesterday. And some of that comes by mistakes. Just want you to know that. I remember at my last job, and I mean, I hadn't been in the workforce for like 20 some years, and I was over 50 when I started. And I'm telling you, like the work clerk position I had in a hospital, it's fast paced and there's a lot to learn. And I would come home and I remember actually not even getting home, pulling over at the side of the road and just crying and thinking, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. And one day, is well, it was probably the only day I actually pulled over on the side of the road. I thought to myself, Connie, you're going to make mistakes. <laughs> because all my life, my biggest fear has been failure. And making mistakes were really bad and destroyed me almost. And my thought came, you're going to make mistakes. And it's okay, because you're going to learn from those mistakes. And I can say, honestly, rarely has there been a mistake that I've made twice. And somehow making those mistakes actually cements the thing in my head. Um, I have found, sorry, this is a big deal for me. Um have found that since the death of my mom and since the whole COVID thing and all losing my job, all those things, it really has affected my mental capacity. And I feel like I'm getting it back. And I think this job is good for that because it's forcing me to turn those wheels that are getting a little rusty. But I remember one day getting in my car and not remembering how to start it. And it's a push button start. Like, you know, I, I'm just becoming so much aware of what trauma and, and like so many things, how it affects us 
physically, it's not just emotional. It actually changes our brain patterns and neuro something, neuro pathways. I think that's sort of what it is. And, and physically, like, I feel like my hormones are out of whack. I think there's so much going on. And a lot of it, I believe, is from the various forms of trauma that I've been through the last two years. So I'm not crying the blues. I'm just saying that going into this new job at 63 and learning an industry I've never been exposed to ever and having to do things I've never had to do, like insur dealing with insurance and booking patient appointments and so many things, um, it's been a challenge. It has been a challenge. And it probably will be a challenge for a while. <laughs> But I'm still here and yesterday was my first day alone and it was May 1st and I'm just going to pat myself on the shoulder. I remember to pay the rent for the for the office like it's just so much new stuff and thankfully thankfully I am I don't have little kids I don't have a lot of responsibility at home I mean my house is a disaster but nobody's starving. I can go in as early as I want and stay as late as I want. And I will do that until I master this because I'm finding like I want to be thorough. I always want to do things right. And it takes a little while when I'm doing something I'm, I'm unfamiliar with to process the steps and remember the things. And, you know, Sarah's been amazing training me, but you can only absorb so much and I don't know. Other people learn differently, maybe. I don't know. You know, it's doing. That helps. It's making mistakes. Like, if I just have to depend on my memory, I'm not going to do very well. So, as I learn to do these things, and I do them over and over repeatedly, I know they're going to come like second nature. I can already see a change in some things. So, I know you won't understand because I wouldn't have understood but when a patient comes in, if they've got insurance with certain insurances, you can process it while they're being treated. And so I can go in at the beginning of the day and if they have the right insurances, I can go ahead and put their claim in as a draft. And when they actually show up and have their treatment while they're in having the treatment, I can go to that draft, just click a button and it prints it, which saves so much time than having to start from start to finish uh, after their arrival because the treatments don't always take very long. Other people are waiting to get registered. Anyway, so I go in early and make sure that anything I can get done ahead of time, I get done. And that actually re reduces the stress level <laughs> when I'm actually got people in front of me because yesterday on my own, there were a number of things that came up that I have never had to deal with before, never had to do before. And because I had done as much as I could previously, it freed me up to deal with those things because sometimes you, I can get overwhelmed. It's like, ah, <laughs> um, but I made it. And I did end up staying an hour later than I should have. Um, I did come in at least an hour, maybe even an hour and a half before I was required to. But I'm hoping that as time goes on and these tasks become more familiar, it'll come quicker and quicker. So yeah, that's my story. So I have to go back to work tomorrow. Today is my day off and I'm telling you like I'm fried. I didn't get home till after 6.30 last night. I was at the office probably at 6 30 yesterday morning and I didn't have lunch I didn't like it just never stopped all day which is fine it makes the day go quick but by the time I got home I was like brain dead and so I went to bed early really early <laughs> of course I always wake up early I've been up since 4 30 so today I'm like I did shower it may not look like it but I did uh, and then, then we were going to go to Costco because I needed stuff at Costco. And 
I got up, I had a shower, I put my nightgown back on because Glenn wasn't ready and I just like to chill as long as I can. And then he had to go into town and came back and, and we were, he had his shower and we we're ready to go. And he said, and without a word from me, with I never, I never peeped a word. He said, well, what if, would you like me to go? Because we have to go 45 minutes away. It's not down the street. It's 45 minutes away. And it basically takes your whole day. Uh, would you like me to go and you stay and work on supper? I'm like, score. Like, I'm not going to say no. Uh, it really helps. So anyway, here I am trying to figure out what to have for supper. I have meat in the freezer, that, fridge that needs to be used. I'm craving vegetables. I'm trying to make sure that I have leftovers so I can take them for lunch in the morning, tomorrow, because it'll be another 12 hour day at least tomorrow. And I've gone through so many things. Oh, I'm going to make this. No, no, I think I'm going to make this. And again, like I said, by the time you get through the list of options on Pinterest, you just want to order out. Like you're just already tired it feels like you already made all the things so what I am doing I'm doing a stir fry however I have two zucchini that need to be used and I love zucchini but nobody else does so I was gonna put it in the stir fry but I think I'm gonna do it separate with some red onion with some mushrooms that nobody else likes and um, the stir fry that I make for them, which is broccoli, cauliflower, and peppers, because all those needed to be used. I'll just steal some of theirs and put my zucchini and stuff on top of it. So that's what I'm doing. All these vegetables. This, the weather's been bizarre. I got up this morning. Well, I didn't get up. I was awake. Glenn brought me coffee in bed. He's such a sweetheart. Um... And the sun was shining, and I don't know where you are, but the last few days, it has been, sorry, I'm just, last few days, it has rained buckets and buckets, like just so much. There's just water laying everywhere. And when I woke up this morning, it looked like it was going to be a sunny day, and I was like so excited. I thought, this is amazing. And half an hour later, or an hour maybe, I look out again and it's pouring rain. Well, so that dampness makes me cold. And so I put a sweater on. And now I look out and it's sunny again. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not falling for that this time. <laughs> I'm keeping my sweater on. Because I still feel a little chilled. Those kind of chills go to my bones. But if by the time I'm done all this, it's still sunny out, I actually may go sit outside. I love hearing the birds. I love spring. I hear them more in the spring than I think in the summer. I don't know if that makes any sense. But when I wake up and I hear the birds chirping and singing, that just lights me up. I don't know what it is. But anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. And I have no point to this video except to check in and say, I don't know, first of all, how often I'm going to be able to do videos. Uh, my days are staggered. So Monday and Wednesday, I work pretty much 12 hour days. And Friday, I work half a day. So I work one day off, work one day off, work half a day and the weekend. And I'm trying to because with my sourdough, like I really want to keep baking some bread, not as much. Um, that's a time shift thing. Like I have to do the, the leaven has to sit until it's bubbly. And some days that takes not very long. Other days it takes hours or overnight. So timing everything is going to be a challenge. Yeah. And making meals, like, I don't know what I'm going to have to show you. I'm hoping to get out in the garden soon I think I'm going to throw all my plants that we brought in to winter over. Like I got chives, I've got a mandevilla, I've got a, they're in there, that's why I'm looking, a mint plant, I've got an hibiscus, I've got oregano. I don't know if there's much more than that. Thyme. I think I'm going to throw those all outside because I don't think it's going to freeze. And they're, they're, they're go growing. Oh, rosemary, that's the other one. I want that to survive. 
So I don't think it'll kill them to put them out. My starts though, I haven't had a lot of good outcomes. I think I might have been overwatering. So now I'm letting them kind of dry out a bit. My daughter said to let them dry out until they start to wilt. So that's what I'm doing because a lot of them seem to have like a root rot. They've been growing. I transplanted them into the uh, solo cups and then a lot of them died off and they just kind of rotted from the bottom. So I don't know. I don't know. We may get some we may get some vegetables out of this. I don't know. It's a it's a mystery and an experiment. And I guess again, just like my job, you learn by doing, right? I felt like I could have taken another at least two weeks training. But you're never going to feel ready. And it's only when you get out there and you're thrown in the deep end and you have to swim or sink that I guess you develop those muscles, the skills, whatever. Like it's, we avoid challenges. We avoid unknown. We avoid hard. We avoid fear of failure. Like not fear of failure, but possibility of failure. We like to stay where it's comfortable and familiar and we've got it all worked out. And I'm not going to lie. I'd never have chosen this path if it was up to me, but they've gone through down. I've gone through down. All, I've gone down through a lot of paths in my life. I never would have chosen. Today, I won't say that I'm thankful for them. You know, that I'm glad they happened. I'm glad that I strengthened emotional, spiritual muscle, muscles that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. That's all, that's all I've got. I won't say I'm happy it happened. Oh my gosh, it was, a, no, I'm just gonna say I survived. I would never have chosen it if I had the option. But, you know, there's always gonna be challenges that you don't plan on. And for me personally, and I, I'm not preaching to anybody, um, when I come up against those walls that I just really don't understand and to this day still struggle with, even though I've surpassed them, even though I've survived them, there's question marks in my heart. And God and I have a lot of conversations about those because I'm like, this isn't settled for me. I still don't understand and maybe I never will this side of eternity but I'm not going to pretend that I'm okay with it. Like I'm not, and I'm not happy and I wish it was different, but not my will, but your will be done. And I will trust you when it hurts. When I trust you, when it's dark, I will trust you though. I have no freaking clue because you're the only constant I really have to hold on to. So that's what I'm doing. And this is part of my journey. And I want to thank everybody. I'm going to cut it short because I think somebody's coming in. And I just want you to know things are progressing. I think we're going to take the house off the market right now. Uh, I think there's more work that needs to be done. I just feel like now that Glenn and I both have jobs, it's probably not the time to pick up and move. And I'm not sure whether or not I want to sell here and buy a place here. I think if we did anything, we would sell here and rent something and put the money down on a place up north where we ultimately end up, ultimately want to end up. Um, but we'll see. We go one day at a time. I, I have no clue where this is going to go. I have no clue what's going to happen. And, but I will keep coming on here and you can follow along. If you have any words of wisdom, Feel free to share them in the comments. Um, if you want to follow this journey, click subscribe down below. And thanks for hanging in with me. Have a good day, guys.